Hello, in this video we are going to talk about a lens that I have recently purchased for myself which is this Sigma 24mm f1.4 lens and why I switch to it from the lens that I really loved and used for a long time which was the Canon 24mm f2.8 IS USM. So let's get started. Alright, so at first uh, let me tell you that I really love the 24mm focal lens. I really think that having a prime lens of 24mm is really useful, especially for someone like me which does YouTube videos. This shot is, this is actually not shot on the 24mm, this is shot on the 15 but cropped to the equivalent framing of a 24 which I normally use for this shot. So 24mm is perfect for this kind of videos. I also use the 24mm for vlogging and also of course for astrophotography. I think 24mm is a perfect focal length for Milky Way photography and this is the kind of things that I use a 24 prime for. And if you have been watching this channel for a while you probably know my review of the Canon 24mm f2.8 and why I thought and actually I still think that this is an excellent excellent lens, especially for the money, because the Sigma is definitely more expensive. But obviously the Sigma has a brighter aperture. It has an aperture of f1.4, the maximum aperture, while the Canon has a maximum aperture of only f2.8. But the Canon has an optical image stabilization and this is always what has been appealing to me because uh, I am doing some handheld footage and I don't have a stabilized camera, especially this EOS R. It doesn't have IBIS. So when I'm vlogging, I really thought that using having a lens with image stabilization would be of a huge difference. But I have been using this Sigma for a while. For instance, this shot is handheld and also this shot is handheld. This was actually shot using my B cam, which is the Sony A7S II, which does have image stabilization, but pairing it up with an optically image stabilized lens, I thought is going to make, make a huge difference. Uh, in comparison to a, a lens that is not stabilized. But honestly, I don't see that much of a difference and the footage from the unstabilized Sigma is definitely usable to me and looks very, very good. So the fact that it's not image stabilized, it's not really a concern. And also I always thought that since I am doing astrophotography using a tracker, I don't really need to have an extremely wide aperture like f1.4. I can just shoot at f2.8, save a little bit of money and shoot with a tracker and still get excellent results for Milky Way photography, low noise in my images, etc. And bear in mind that I was very happy using this Canon lens. Here are some of my images that I captured using this 24 from Canon and I absolutely loved it. And to be honest, since I switched to the Sigma, I am still shooting at f2.8 on the Sigma, even though it opens up to f1.4. But the image quality from the Sigma at f2.8 is way superior than the image quality at f2.8 from the Canon. And that is because vignetting and astigmatism are just way better when you stop down a lens that is wide open at f1.4 versus a lens that is wide open at f2.8 and you want to use it wide open. And let me actually show you some uh, test images so you can better see what is going on with both vignetting and astigmatism with both of these lenses. Okay, so the comparison that you are seeing right now, on the left you have the Canon 24mm at f2.8 and on the right you have the Sigma 24mm f1.4 that has been stopped down to f2.8 and there have, has been no editing done to both these images. As you can see on the small preview, definitely the image on the left has way more vignetting in the corners. Vignetting is arguably not that big of a deal because you can just fix it in Lightroom very easily with one checkbox but it will add a little bit of noise to your corner. So this is something to consider. For instance, if we take a look at the comparison of the Sigma between the f1.4 at f2.8 exposures, you can also see that f at f1.4, which is wide open for this lens, the vignetting is significantly heavier than vignetting at f2.8, which is almost not noticeable. But let's actually take a look at astigmatism on the Canon and versus Sigma because this is where the real difference can be seen. And for that let's actually uh, fix the vignetting because that way we'll be able to see uh, more prominently what the problem is. So uh, where is this checkbox? Enable profile corrections. Okay so let's enable profile corrections on both of these exposures. And then let's compare the Canon versus the Sigma, both shot at f2.8, so the same kind of light gathering capabilities. But let's take a look in the corners uh, if we zoom in. So for instance, if we zoom in into this corner, 
Let's zoom in into 100%. As you can see in the extreme corners, this is the astigmatism aberration. This is what is causing a pin sources of light, which are the stars, to appear in this kind of an elongated and kind of a weirdly weird shape. This is astigmatism, and as you can see, the astigmatism on the sigma shot at the same aperture is significantly smaller. It's not completely gone, but it's definitely a massive difference. And if we look at the edges, you can see still you have a lot of astigmatism if we go to this corner as you can see a lot of astigmatism on these stars versus on the sigma it's pretty much not noticeable so there you have it this is and uh, the kind of aberration that is pretty much impossible to fix in post if you wanted to fix it in post it would be a huge pain in the ass so you just have to live with it Honestly, it's not that big of a deal if you are uh, seeing a full-blown white Milky Way shot and you don't pixel paper into the corners, chances are that you are not even going to notice it. But if you want to have prints hanging uh, on your walls or something where people can really inspect those corners, then having huge astigmatism is definitely a deterrent uh, if you're deciding between lenses. But let's actually take a look what happens uh, at, uh, for the Sigma f1.4 if it is shot wide open. And let's compare that to the Canon 24 shot wide open at f2.8. So if we load up this comparison, this is going to be this photo versus this photo. And as you can see, again, the Canon has bigger astigmatism. Even if the Sigma is shot wide open, as you can see, this is shot at f1.4, the astigmatism on this lens is definitely even smaller than the astigmatism at f2.8 on the Canon. If we go into the corners, to the very corners, as you can see, the astigmatism is bigger than on the, on the edges here on the right edge, but it is still smaller than astigmatism right here, for instance, on the Canon which really is a big win for the Sigma because even wide open, the astigmatism is still very well controlled. And bear in mind that astigmatism in wide angle lenses is extremely hard to correct for lens manufacturers. So really kudos to Sigma for creating such an awesome performance in terms of astigmatism at the edges of the frame. And also the cool thing about having the Sigma is even though if I'm shooting with an astro tracker, I stop it down to f2.8 to get excellent image performance on the on the edges of, of the frame and minimal vignetting, I can actually take this lens and don't take the astro tracker at all if I'm for instance traveling with my family to a remote location by an airplane and every, every kilogram in my bag and every cubic centimeter or just every space counts, I can just skip taking the tracker altogether and just shoot with this lens wide open at f1.4, shoot a couple of, I don't know, a couple dozen exposures, stack them together and get an excellent Milky Way shot from a remote location without even having to hold the tracker. So this lens is really a game changer if you want to shoot untracked astrophotography then having a f1.4 is definitely going to make a huge difference between f2.8. It's like two stops of light, two stops of ISO in terms of noise, huge difference. And also when it comes to filming videos, uh, I definitely see a difference because with the Sigma f1.4, I actually have more bokeh here in this shot in the studio. As you can see, this space is really, really tight. I can touch this, this bookcase and these lenses that I have here. And this is actually being shot at f4, which I normally don't do, but in order to show you the lens, I had to use a different lens. So normally I was shooting it at f2.8, but switching to f1.4 for filming my videos, as you can see in this comparison uh, it's it's not a huge difference but this lens uh, at f1.4 definitely gives me more bokeh in the background which is something that i really like and also it allows me to use a lower iso in this kind of a um, pretty dimly lit uh, situation here in my basement so i can have cleaner image, lower amounts of noise and better image quality overall. And of course, another filming aspect is because I am shooting a lot of those astrophotography vlogs kind of in the field. I am uh, shooting, I am showing you my setup. So if I slap on this lens, which opens up to f1.4 and I use it along with a Sony a7S II, which is an excellent performer in low light, I get exceptional image quality even in just horrendous conditions when it comes to the light lack of light. So this really is also a game changer for my Astro vlogs. And this is basically, these are the reasons why, why I think the Sigma uh, f1.4 24mm is really worth the money. 
There's also a Canon version of this lens, which means that Canon also has a 24mm f1.4 L-series lens, but this lens is like twice as expensive as the Sigma, and it only is better for like autofocus speed, and it has weather sealing gasket. Uh, this one doesn't have a weather sealing gasket, and the Canon does, but for me, these two uh, are really not that important, and I think the Sigma, currently, as of today, I would say that the Sigma 24 f1.4 is my very favorite lens for both astrophotography, filmmaking, and overall, you know, stuff with the camera. So, yeah. If you want to pick up any of these lenses, the links will be down below in the description, as always. And that's basically it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And also consider subscribing to my channel. I post a lot of, like, some gear reviews, but mostly like astrophotography content, some vlogs in the field, interesting stuff. Check out my channel and the videos I have already. I have over a hundred videos, so definitely check them out. And hopefully see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.